for this one, we want to look at uh, 7a and 7b from the 7a packet. Um, so again, this deals with similarity, and the only thing that we've been dealing with are two things. We have this as a way of proving triangles are similar, and we have the fact that corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional and corresponding angles of similar triangles have to be congruent. Okay, so this is after similar triangles, and this is to get similar triangles. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the first pair of triangles right here. There's the little one and then the big one that overlaps it. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to figure out what y is, and in order to do that, first we need to prove that the triangles are similar. So one of the things we have is, well, these angles already match up. So in my two triangles, I've got the big, these bottom left-hand angles match up. Um, and then also, the top angles match up, because they're the same in both triangles. Uh, now, what I need to figure out is what y is. So let me label the rest of the sides here. This one's 4, this one's y. This one I don't know at the bottom of it. This one here isn't 2, it's 4 plus 2. It's the whole thing. So that's 6. And on the bottom it's 6. And then this one is y plus 3. And right now I have two angles matching up with two other angles, so I know that this thing, these two triangles have to be similar because of AA. So what I can do now is I'm allowed to say that the sides are proportional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a proportion. 4 goes this 4 right here goes with this 6 right there the same way that this y over here goes with this y plus 3 down there y over y plus 3 so then when I cross multiply I get 4 parentheses y plus 3 equals 6y and then when I work this out I'm gonna get 4y plus 12 equals 6y so 2y equals 12 and then y ends up being 6 out of that. Okay, over in this problem on the right side, uh, so that's 7b, I've got these parallel lines on top and bottom, and uh, then I know some side lengths. So what the parallel lines do is they force me to have some alternate interior angles. So this angle right here has to go with that one down there because they're alternate interiors. This angle right here even has to go with that one right there because they're alternate interiors. You can do the vertical angles too if you want, but all you need are two of them. So I've got two pairs already, so those match up. Uh, so then what I gotta do is I gotta figure out uh, a proportion to set up to solve for, let's say, x. And if you look, l let's, let's actually match up the sides of the triangles properly. If you look here, the 8 definitely is going to go with the Y because they're between the curves that I marked, between the red and the green curves. If you look at this one here, the 4 on the bottom, that doesn't go with the 10.5 because the 4 is touching my red curves. So that one's going to end up going with the 7 that's touching these red curves up in the top right corner. And so then that leaves this side to go with this side down here. So um, when I'm looking for a proportion to set up, I can set up these two red ones I know the numbers for. So I'm going to write them out right away because the key is to often try and go for ones that have two numbers. So I got 4 over 7, and that matches up. So 4 is from the small triangle, 7 is from the big one. So little red over big red is the same as little green over big green. So x over 10.5. So then if I cross multiply, I get 42 equals 7x. And so that means x has to be 6. OK. Now I can use the 4 over 7 again to help me get what y is. So 4 is from the small triangle, so small red over big red is equal to the same thing as small blue over big blue. So then I get 4y equals 56 when I cross multiply, 
and so y is going to end up be 